It might be listed as a ghost town on the internet, but as you can see, Marlbank is alive and well, just another quiet Ontario village. So why is it declared a ghost town? Well, the reason can be found just west of here, where an enormous cement factory once stood and is now just a set of ghostly ruins. And the ghostly part may also have something to do with the strange markings on the bottom of Dry Lake. These lime green shapes are the result of dredging done for the cement factory over a hundred years ago. Someone had figured out that the muck at the bottom of the lake was actually marl, a very specific blend of clay and lime. And it just so happened that this particular marl was absolutely perfect for producing Portland cement, which when mixed with gravel and sand makes an incredibly durable form of concrete. And around the turn of the century, concrete was just catching on as a building material, so cement was in high demand. Entrepreneurs from the Rathburn Lumber Company built a huge factory on the shores of Dry Lake in 1889 for refining this marl into cement. When it was up and running, there were 200 men working and even bunking at the plant and it was producing up to 85 tons of high quality cement per day in the factory's 11 high temperature kilns. In fact, some of the Marlbank cement was used in the building of the Panama Canal between 1903 and 1909, and the piers for the famous Quebec Bridge between 1900 and 1907. But after a buyout by the expanding Canada Portland Cement Company, the Marlbank factory was suddenly shut down in 1909. With their economic lifeblood cut off, the village of Marlbank shrunk from a population of 1,000 to barely 200, and the plant itself fell into ruins, which we are about to see. This first structure, which is visible from the road, may have been part of the railroad loading facility. By the way, all of the ruins are on private property. Permission from the owners is required to enter the woods. Pictures from the ground, like this one, appear here courtesy of photographer Peter R. Snell. As we swing around a bit, the lower parts of the huge kilns appear between the trees. Immediately adjacent to the kilns, Partial walls appear, probably parts of the offices, judging by the windows. This final structure features a partially intact, four inch thick concrete roof. I guess they had some spare cement lying around. I'm not sure exactly where this kiln is in the ruins, but you can see the thick walls. Cement requires temperatures of 1450 degrees Celsius during the manufacturing process. It's hard to believe this enormous factory was once operational here on the shores of Dry Lake near the little village of Marlbank. Thanks for watching. If you like my videos, subscribe below and click the little bell to be notified of new stories. Bye for now.